Good morning, everybody. And very, very warm welcome to the first day of MIPM Asia. Thank you for coming. And then welcome to this opening macroeconomic keynote. I don't need to tell you how much turmoil we are going through in the global economy and global markets. So that's a fitting way to start this um, MIPM Asia together to reflect on the context within which real estate investment is taking place today. So overall, you are very optimistic because of the balance sheet of the country, because of your faith in the government policy. But you did mention 10 to 30 percent housing price decrease as one of your forecasts. Mm. The decline of the housing price is really a result of the government restriction on purchase. Most people, if you do not live in the city, mm -hmm. you cannot uh, buy apartments. Even if you do live there, you can only buy one apartment. So it's basically a restriction on demand. Um, I think uh, the government uh, officials uh, privately, they never announce a number. Mm -hmm. But uh, privately, they're thinking about the 20% really is the limit of the decline they can tolerate. But my own sense is if they can tolerate 20%, they probably would adjust the policy once we hit close to 20%, mm -hmm. the market response reaction may, may, may be delayed, mm -hmm. which means the decline may be more than 30%. But one thing I think is pretty clear, if you ask people around in China, if you ask them what will happen to the price, they probably will tell you, well, in the next six to 12 months, the price probably is going to decline. But you ask them what about in five years, I think a majority of them will tell you the price will still go up. Um, the question I would like us to focus on is uh, whether we should be in the mood <coughs> for Asian real estate. Um, and let's look at this from a perspective of an international investor, uh, starting with, uh, with the performance of, of the markets and the question whether we do have a performance problem. If we look at this more on a short-term basis, um, building on Yiping's remarks, sort of long-term versus short-term performance, uh, this chart shows the latest 12 months. And the message here actually is that uh, the, the sentiment turned quite negative uh, to the listed property sector in Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific has underperformed uh, the other markets, the other regions, and is in a negative 15% territory. Uh, when you look at emerging uh, markets Asia over that period of time, you see even stronger negative uh, connotation here, down 30%, although uh, quite similar to the, other, uh, to the other emerging markets. So the question arises, well, what do we see, uh, what do we see in the direct market uh, uh, real estate fundamentals level? What you see here is that Asia Pacific has done very well, especially after the bouncing, bouncing back from the financial crisis and has been outperforming uh, uh, Europe uh, and Americas. So, so far, so good. And in terms of uh, the latest quarter, uh, where everybody has these short-term concerns that Yiping talked about, actually so far, uh, we still see, um, uh, we still register a quite strong rental growth um, in, in office market. Let me try to give you both a bullish perspective and a bearish perspective uh, from a point of view of that. Uh, in Let me try to give you both a bullish perspective and a bearish perspective uh, from a point of view of that uh, international investor. And what, so what somebody who is bullish on real estate in China would emphasize the following points. They would say the urbanization is not yet complete. It's still a long way to go. One million people per month are migrating to cities um, and the China hasn't been built yet. But then on the other hand, there would be people who would, uh, who would be bearish on the story, whether they are far away from, from China or, or closer. And they would argue that China is exposed through its export-led policy to US and Europe. And if those decline, China growth will uh, be badly hit. I have to say I'm not really an investment strategist. Um, but if you, as a macroeconomist, normally I think it really depends on whether you're optimistic about China or not. If you are optimistic about uh, gross sustainability in one country, normally two things always happen. One is the currency will appreciate continuously as long as strong growth continue. And the other is obviously property uh, price will continue to rise because of the inelastic supply of land. So these are the two things to keep in mind. 
but these are also um, part of the financial market, and at some time down the road, they could uh, come uh, at, uh, at a risk. Let me tell you a, an anecdote from the world of chess, and I used to be a chess player many, many years ago. And it goes like this, there's a, a student comes to a master and says, master, how many moves ahead do you have to think? Five, 10, 20, and the master mm -hmm. says, just one, one further than your opponent. So an invitation to greater learning, an invitation to learn more about our views for China. Are we willing to make a bet on growth or, or not? An invitation to greater learning about the disparities in the market, not just the market per se, but what the others are doing. So we can be that one step ahead. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. We have a Thank whole you. conference to enjoy over the, the next two days and, and to, do, to do on that learning. And then